and in, in some ways uh, it really leaves uh, after effects and, and so on behind. Um, now I mentioned stereoscopic pl player, but there's also a, a stereographic maker. Uh, it's a Japanese um, product, um, and it has uh, a full, full editing um, or full alignment and registry uh, capabilities and uh, export into um, many different uh, AVI uh, formats. Um, yeah, there's a there's a a driver produced by this company called IZ3D. Uh, it's a, it's a, a a plugin that lets one render um, all sorts of in all sorts of ways um, to stereographic monitors. It's it's very useful for um, if one wanted to design a passive stereo um, projection system. One could use this driver. Um, you know, it's it's currently a lot more flexible than the NVIDIA 3D Vision uh, driver. Um, so one could combine it with a stereoscopic player and um, uh, create a, a passive stereographic projection system. Um, Maya obviously uh, has has a, a built-in 3D camera uh, in it that uh, you know is very useful. I I don't think. Uh, are any of you a 3D, like modeling kind of people? You're 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 into modeling. Do you use Maya? Yeah, I do. I do. Uh, I use 3D Max. Okay, they they have the stereo cameras in that as well. Any number of cameras you can add. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's really kind of stereo stereo stereography is really so much better suited for computer generated imagery which makes Nuke a very powerful tool and, and certainly if one is working in, in any kind of commercial field it's, it's, it's very uh, uh, well it has its obvious uh, appeal. Uh, there's this expensive plugin uh, made by Cineform um, which uh, is, is quite useful uh, and, and very much simplifies um, Workflow, but uh, in my opinion, it's it's uh, way overpriced. I mean, it, it it makes sense in in a lot of workflows. Um, you know, in the post production environment, if you're working with certain um, certain file formats and acquisition formats, um, it it makes a lot of sense. Um, there's also TriVision Player, which is uh, another sort of display driver player slash driver system uh, it's uh, um, I've found that um, one of the one of the kind of holdups of, of, of a very kind of um, streamlined production flow is is the inability of uh, and the sort of limitations of, of image sensors uh, at this time to uh, shoot very stable um, imagery. Um, you know, the CMOS uh, sensors, they're, they're, they're quite, uh, uh, they have all sorts of problems in, in w w when one is trying to sync two cameras together, they do a, a scanning uh, they have this scanning uh, thing called a, a rolling shutter is, is how it's, it's termed and, and the, the sensor does a, a scanning and the two cameras can be scanning out of sync so if, if, if a subject is moving or the camera is moving it can cause all sorts of um, anomalies in the, in the image that uh, make it uh, well hard and, 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 and problematical and another uh, Similar sort of uh, problem is is stabilizers that we've all come to um, rely on in in video cameras, um, and there's a similar thing where the stabilization is not not reliably um, shared in, in, you know, among two cameras. So uh, the the result is is one needs to to, to 
take stabilization off and um, stabilize later in post. Uh, fortunately, there's a, you know, there's several really, well, there's actually a couple of um, stable stabilization um, tools. I mean, there's one in Shake that is, uh, I don't know if you're any Shake users out here, but uh, um, it's, there's, there's this Mercalli, a German company, um, well, ProDad makes this uh, comp this plugin called Mercalli, and it uh, it it will do all kinds of um, stabilizing of, of a video scene. Not like um, you know the kind of stabilization that's built into After Effects that uh, you know where you have to pick a point and you know and track the point, and if you lose registry of the point, then you have to sort of start over. It's a very Smooth camera in FCP Smooth cam. Well, you're a Mac guy, right? Yeah. I'm yeah. Mac yeah. Because, yeah. because, so um, yeah, I'm I'm not not on the Mac yet. It's it's um, this this um, I think it works for the Mac too, but um, uh, it's a couple hundred dollars. Yeah, it's 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 like a hundred dollars or something. Um, so Mac is, you know, has its its own um, uh, workflow, which I'm not as familiar with these days. But uh, I know that the stereoscopic toolbox um, is is a is a very nice nice uh, product that has a nice complement to Neo 3D, and one can perform and automate all sorts of um, cropping techniques and so on that, um, that more to do with uh, uh, the mastering of, of, a, of a stereographic uh, product where a project whereas Neo 3D is, is more to do with like just the alignment and the sort of color, color correction and so on. Um, there's, there's, you know, if, if you were using After Effects as the, as the post-production environment, there's some really good tutorials on and and links to scripts for uh, stereographic workflow. Um, through you can you can find it easily uh, through Vimeo through this this link. Um, now I wanted to talk just a little bit about cameras. Um, you know, I mentioned about the CMOS uh, sensor, um, you know, which is pretty much uh, a kind of uniform um, character in, in cameras these days. We, we still have CCDs and some high-end cameras, but generally it's, it, it's falling behind. And it's, it's even said that, um, you know, this sort of rolling shutter thing is going to be, uh, cease to be an issue. But it... In my mind, it is an issue at, at this point in, in terms of stereographic production. Um, you know, the, there's a conspicuous uh, product that you're probably all familiar with, the Panasonic uh, $20,000 <laughs> camera. Uh, I'm spacing on the, the model number, but it's, uh, um, you know, it definitely has its appeal, but uh, in my mind, it'll be replaced by by next year by you know with something half its price and and probably much better. It's it's something the limitation it, of that camera is the way I see it is it's it it only does um, parallax adjustment. Um, so the, the, all these notions of of towing in are are, are not addressable and. Um, you know, it, it's very appealing and nice to have, you know, sort of to be able to have to output files, uh, scene detected files that that you know one doesn't need to perform temporal alignment and probably not much other kind of alignment. Um, but when one gets used to, uh, you know, this kind of working method of 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 uh, Doing this alignment as part of the workflow, it's it um, one can get the hang of it, and it's not it's not such a big big deal. Um, mirror rigs are are you know I, I think they will go 
the way of the dinosaurs. They're they're really, uh, you know, to my surprise, I, I, I found out this year that um, virtually none of the, the 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 films now that are part of this new 3D wave uh, are actually shot in in 3D uh, at this point. They're, you know, with a few exceptions like Jackass and Avatar. They're, they're um, they, they those were shot with like pretty sophisticated cameras, but you know m many of them are all done in, in these conversion houses that uh, that you know can do quite an amazing job, but it's, you know severely limited and and um, you know the sort of uh, um, probably attributed to the sort of really clunky awkwardness of, of mirror rigs and, um, you know, the certain uh, lack of mobility, um, you know, disparity in, in the images. There's all sorts of um, sort of tendencies to have to, for artifacts to creep in. Um, it's just sort of um, not the way to go, uh, you know. I think miniaturization will will make um, smaller cameras uh, more a thing of the day. Now um, that's it for my uh, my aid. I'm gonna free free fall now um, <laughs> and show you uh, some tools. I mean, I I had you know I wanted to show you stereoscopic player and a few other tools, but. You know, looking around the room, I think we're all quite familiar. Am I am I not mistaken? Are are, are you guys familiar with the stereoscopic player? And no, no. Okay, this this is uh, um, it's a PC only tool. There's a free version um, available uh, for 50 euros. I think you can get a a license um, that lets you play more than 10 minutes at a time um, but um, essentially what uh, it's it's just a player there's no export functions but uh, it's quite useful and works just very well and very reliable um, you know when can open a left and right file um, What's the name of the player? stereoscopic player um, so when one opens you know, one goes and finds a left and right uh, file, um, and it'll ask you which, which, how you want to display it. Um, or you can go into um, this viewing method, and you see there's there's you know op many options, and um, you know they're very good at at, at updating and keeping up with uh, with the sort of technology and uh, what, what's available. Um, and there's all sorts of ways to, uh, I don't know if this is going to work actually, this is kind of just right out of the box, we didn't have a chance to try it on the monitor, but one would, um, no, it's not going to work. Uh, Yeah. Um, so one has one has the ability to, uh, if there's ano anomalies, um, and one one wants to play with the parallax. Uh, you see, we can use arrow keys to to make adjustments. So, if one had, say the two poles are very small screen that we're used to previewing the material on, but it's actually intended for, you know, some IMAX display, one would, you know, greatly benefit to have, have this sort of flexibility. And this is something that a Blu-ray Blu -ray playback uh, won't have. But, I mean, the, the, the system that is being installed downstairs it will have, will be based on this stereoscopic player. So, um, You'll 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 be getting to know this. Um, yeah. Uh, so this is um, 